So today we're going to talk about state charts. Um, this is uh, another one of the tools we have in our software engineering framework. Uh, keep in mind in the uh, spectrum of semi you know, informal, semi-formal, and formal methods, state charts represents a formal method uh, because basically it's an extension of finite state, auto finite state automata or uh, finite state machines. Okay? Um, so um, these were uh, basically uh, state charts were invented in 1985 as an uh, extension, like I mentioned, in to solve some of the uh, practical problems of uh, finite state machines. And um, it's actually, uh, um, you know, an important uh, seminal uh, article in, uh, 1980, in 1987 that came out. Um, uh, a company, iLogix, was actually founded um, in Israel to, um, to commercialize state charts. And that company has since been uh, acquired and is now part of IBM and Rhapsody. So StateMate was their uh, first uh, um, tool that came out, but now they have uh, IBM Rhapsody, um, which um, is uh, an object-oriented uh, uh, basis for state charts. Um, it's uh, pretty popular both in academia and in industry. And in fact, um, a, new, uh, a new standard um, called State Chart XML um, was released in uh, 2015 after uh, about a decade or so of development. Um, and so state charts both have, again, they're very topical, both from the standpoint of um, um, theoretical research, but also for implementation. The auto industry, there are a number of, of industries that are making uh, strong use of um, state charts. So, again, what are they? Basically, um, state charts are finite state automata. Uh, but what um, the state chart syntax and formalism gives you is uh, the ability to have hierarchical um, FSA, and uh, so which which is referred to as depth. So you can have states inside states, um, and uh, so you can hierarchically define you know with increasing levels of detail um, little uh, finite state machines. Um, there's also uh, the concept of orthogonality. This allows for concurrent processes, and that's uh, a very important uh, thing, again, for, for the, the, the purpose of formal methods is so we can have some provable results, and, uh, and we need that to cover across concurrent processes. And that's a, a weakness uh, also of finite state machines for really complex, um, to, for implementing really complex um, processes. And because concurrency, um, just you get this multiplicity of, of states. And then finally, it adds some broadcast communications. In other words, synchronization between these um, um, discrete concurrent finite state machines or processes. Okay. So what is it that state charts do? Well, they provide um, a simulation. In other words, you can prototype code and, and systems so that you can uh, uh, evaluate the behavior. And uh, the, the cool thing is the prototype is guaranteed to be consistent with the spec because the prototype and the spec are one and the same. Keep in mind, we're talking about software specification methods. Um, and so this is why um, finite state machines are great for visualizing and, and understanding code, but they aren't also always great for going all the way down to the details of implementation. Um, now, another thing that state charts does is, is analysis, at least to some degree. Um, this is to check the specification for desired properties. And so again, simulation examines, uh, you know, basically one possible execution uh, path, um, whereas analysis considers all of the execution paths so you can find out, right, what might be going wrong, where you might not be meeting specifications. Now, originally state charts was not really designed for analysis. Um, there are some, um, there are some, again, some extensions, some practical tools which allow it to do um, analysis. And then code generation, right? You have this ability now to simulate code and actually build a model, a prototype of, of your software, your system. There are some functionalities for analyses 
and there are systems that allowed for code generation, so the automatic conversion of your state charts into compilable and executable code. And that includes, again, this is, this is a critical tool for real-time and embedded systems, so that includes uh, time-critical and time-deterministic systems. So, um, again, let's remember back to our previous diagram, our previous slide, where we talked about state transition diagrams. We've already gone over these. Um, very simple, you know, we talked about, you know, the um, states and transitions are really the key. Again, you must have discrete system states, um, and it's about determining your events and, and states. And what we talked about before was the Mealy out, which is the Mealy uh, um, uh, format for uh, state transition diagrams. Um, a lot of, now we're going to see a little bit of both. Again, Mealy and more, they are theoretically the same. Mealy outputs happen during a transition. More outputs happen within a state. With, uh, with some of the tools in the user community, I think there is a, um, possibly a slight preference for, for more in uh, many of the help um, sites that uh, are available out there in the community sites. But again, state charts doesn't isolate to one or the other. Um, okay, um, And we've been talking about you know, you know, these have been um, the uh, uh, this one here. This is an example here. Is an example of a melee because the output here is the cyan, the light blue. Um, they're specified and tied to the transitions, right? Again, theoretically and provably, right? Melee and more are equivalent. Now, syntax for state charts. Instead of using the circle um, for a state. We're going to use a rounded rectangle for the state name, and um, like like I said, that um, the states can in fact contain um, states. So um, that again leads to the idea of a compound state. So we call if it's if it's a basic state that can't be divis isn't divided anymore is not uh, further divisible. We call that an atomic state. Um, if it's a container of, uh, of substates, um, then that, again, is a com compound state. All right? And the tr transitions, again, are their, their arrows, just like uh, um, in uh, finite state automata. Um, and with uh, some nomenclature, you know, typically an atomic state just has a name. Um, if, uh, if it's a compound state, then... The name is often listed either up top or in a box up on top. Okay. Now, um, some other syntax aspects is state concurrency. So again, we said concurrency is one of the important aspects that state charts provide that we don't see in finite state automata. And this dotted line is the syntax or the indicator of, of concurrency. So. Generally, there's going to be a state here. A state one state would be represented. One state transition diagram would be represented here. Another state transition diagram would be represented there. And um, there is an entry point or a starting point for any uh, uh, state chart chart of states, um, and that's indicated by um, the arrow coming from a hard circle, um, a filled circle. And then there are also conditional. Um, um, there's a conditionals that, that are included, right? So um, here we see the C with a circle around it. And then these, these would be each be labeled with what's, uh, what the conditions are that, that you uh, basically branch as you enter a state. So here's an example. Uh, we talked before about our Prince Buller. Um, and again, it's a finite state machine. This is a little bit different from our other Prince Buller in description. Um, but Again, here's the, the, the point, is we have the, there's one state, which is the Prince Buller, and it consists of two basic um, states. There's the off state and the on state, and the on state encompasses all of this information here. Now, how we read this, remember, is, so the Prince Buller is uh, the high-level view, right? Um, that's what we're trying to implement. And so the entry point here is, uh, again, this arrow. So this transition. When you fire up 
um, it comes into the off state. Then, if initialization is, is uh, successful, then it's going to transition into the on state. Okay, again, here is the on state. The on state consists of two concurrent processes or um, state charts. Right? The one here on the left shows how, again, once it enters this state, if we get um, an init success event, then because these are concurrent, right, both states get entered concurrently. And you can see that there is a um, conditional on both of them that says, is the status idle? Well, then, yeah, we go to idle. If it's not idle, well, then it must be printing. Um, and then the queue, so again, um, there's a queue process and a printer process. The queue process, the thing that man maintains the queue, it also comes into a conditional that, that looks at whether the queue is empty or queue is not empty. Um, so the if it's empty, it will wait here until um, we get either, well, well, there's only one way out, which is the, requ the request. Um, and then this is going to trans transition into the non-empty um, state. So we have, keep in mind, we've got um, a state machine associated with a queue and a state machine associated with a printer. Oops. Um, so, um, it either goes into the non-empty state or the empty, and if it's empty, it's just going to sit there and pause until it gets a request that it's no longer in the idle state. Um, or, if it is not empty, if the queue is not empty, well, then that means it's got to be printing. Um, and so here's the non-empty state. Um, again, enter this state um, with, through this uh, um, entry point. And if it's full, you're going to go to the full state. If it's not full, um, you're just in the state where there's space available. And when you get a request, you're going to then um, transition it to the um, full, um, yeah, transition it to the uh, full state, okay? So this is an example. Oh, uh, and, and again, so it is going to, if it's um, not empty, then when a, a print is done, it's going to say, oh, okay, let's go to the next print. And it's going to look, if it's not full, it's going to say, yep, stay, space is available. Let's go ahead and do the request and um, check to see, again, if we are full. Okay, so basic example of uh, how you would write up or, or draw up a uh, state chart representation of this print spooler. Now, how do these compound states work? Um, so again, there are... Um, basically, you can think of these things as separate autonomous state machines, although they might share some synchronization, okay? So let's talk about that. Um, in this case, a is the, it enters into state A um, based on powering up, and then it transitions out of A with only with event S, and it, of course, it goes into the on state. Um, now, once you're in here, if you enter the on state, you're going to come in through this, this, um, entry point. And so you're going to go right into B. So basically, if you're in state A and you get the S event, you're going to go to, to on the on state, which is um, initially state B. And then you can see here are the various transitions that if you're in B and a T occurs, you go to C. If you're in B and a Y occurs, that's going to cause this to tran B to transition to D, but it's also going to cause A to happen. 
But A, in this case, is an event represented in the other concurrent state machine here, because we don't see that event, uh, oops, sorry, over here is the state chart. We don't see that event represented anywhere in here. So again, it must be part of this state. 